Hello, my name is Tomasz Jaszek, and in this video I will talk about a solution to the Dodge Challenge 2021 powered by Codility. In this challenge we are attending an Animal Day event. Uh, there are n people at this uh, event and each of them had either a dog or a cat. The organizers decided to give uh, every person a gift for their pet, but there was some kind of mix-up and uh, some people who owned a dog received a cat toy and some people who own a cat received a dog toy. Our task is to determine whether people can exchange toys uh, in such a way that uh, every person ends up with a correct toy for their pet. Um, but uh, the people can only uh, exchange toys if they know each other. We are asked to write a function that gets four arrays uh, the RIs P and T describe uh, the pets and toys um, every person owns, and RIs A and B describe the relationships between people. There are four sample test cases provided in the uh, task description, so I think it's worth to look at them closer. It's quite hard to understand what is happening in each uh, test case just by looking at a bunch of numbers uh, in the RIs, so it's better to uh, draw a picture. In the first test case, uh, RIs P and T have three elements each. So we know that there are three people numbered 0, 1, and 2. The person number 0 owns a dog, uh, but she received a cat toy. So she would like to um, exchange a cat toy uh, to a dog toy. So we can write this a cat toy to a dog toy. Uh, the person number one has a uh, dog and uh, he received a dog toy. So we can write here a dog and uh, this person is satisfied. Uh, finally, uh, the person number two uh, would like to uh, exchange a dog toy to a cat toy. Finally, we will draw relationships between these people. We know that people numbered 0 and 1 know each other, and people 1 and 2 also know each other. In our picture, we represent relationships as edges uh, connecting uh, uh, dots, which corresponds to uh, certain people. So the question for this example is, uh, can we exchange toys in such a way that every person uh, is uh, happy? Since the person number zero uh, has a, a cat toy and she wants to receive a dog toy, and the person uh, number two uh, has a dog toy and he wants to uh, receive a cat toy, so the easiest solution would be to exchange uh, the toys between uh, these two people. Unfortunately, this is not possible since uh, these people uh, do not know uh, each other. There are no relationship edge between person 0 and person uh, 2. But it turns out that we can provide an exchange scheme using person 1 uh, who knows uh, both uh, person 0 and person 2. And in this scheme, uh, the first thing would be an exchange between uh, person 0 and person 1. So then uh, person zero will uh, end up with a dog uh, and she will be happy. Uh, but uh, then person one will end up with a cat. So in the next step, we will exchange uh, the toys between person number one and person number two. So after this exchange, uh, person number one will get back a dog toy a different one, but uh, that's no problem uh, for him. And the person number two uh, will receive the cat toy. So the answer in this test case is true. We can make exchanges in such a way that every person is happy. We can prepare uh, similar pictures uh, for the remaining test cases, and we can see that they are a little bit more uh, complicated. Uh, formally, we call each such picture uh, a graph in which uh, dots representing people are called vertices 
and lines uh, connecting uh, vertices are called edges. So let's look at the second picture. Uh, observe that the uh, persons number three and four both had uh, cat toys and they both want to uh, exchange these cat toys uh, to dog toys. Unfortunately, uh, they know only each other, so the only possible uh, exchange is uh, directly between them. But they will not profit from uh, this exchange since uh, they both got cat toys, so it will be just exchanging a cat toy to another cat toy. And since they do not know uh, any other person, there is no way to exchange their cat toys to uh, some dog toy. So the answer is negative here, and the reason is that the uh, part of the graph containing vertices 3 and 4 is separated from uh, the rest of the graph. Such a part in which uh, all vertices are connected uh, with each other, uh, either directly on or indirectly, is called a connected component of the graph. And in this example, we have two uh, connected components. So it is easy to see that we should uh, consider each connected component separately uh, because there is no way that a toy uh, from one uh, component could be transferred uh, to a um, vertex uh, in another component. So now let's look at two remaining graphs. Uh, the third graph contains four connected components and the last graph uh, contains one big connected components of eight vertices. So the question is, in which components we can make uh, exchanges? Some components are quite easy to handle. For instance, this, uh, this one containing vertices 0 and 1, uh, because in this component, uh, every vertex is already uh, satisfied. Some components cannot be satisfied at all, uh, such as this one. Uh, and the reason is as follows. Uh, at the beginning, the set of all toys uh, in the vertices of this component are two dogs. And we'd like to make some exchanges. So at the end, both of these vertices will get cat toys. Uh, but observe that during uh, the exchanges, we cannot introduce new toys. So the number of dog toys and the number of cat toys uh, before and after the exchange must be the same. So it's not possible to uh, start from two dog toys and uh, result in two cat toys. In other words, the number of uh, people uh, who owns dog toys and want to uh, exchange them for the uh, cat toys must be exactly the same as the number of people who owns cat toys and want to exchange them into dog toys. So this is a necessary condition for a connected component, but is it sufficient? Observe that in the last graph, we have one big connected component containing eight vertices, and four of these vertices are of type dog to cat, and four of them are of type cat to dog. So this connected component satisfies the condition. The easiest way to make exchanges would be to pair every person uh, who owns a dog toy with another person who owns a cat toy and make exchanges between them. Since their numbers are the same, uh, it is possible to make such a pairing. But the problem is that the uh, people from one pair uh, not necessarily know each other, so we would need to make this uh, kind of exchange uh, involving uh, other people. So the question is, is it possible? So let's suppose that we have a Vertex uh, who owns a dog toy, he, and he would like to exchange this uh, dog with a, a Vertex who owns a, a cat toy. And uh, these vertices are in the same connected component, uh, so we know that there's some path of uh, containing other uh, vertices uh, in such a way that the vertices are in, in this path, uh, know each other. So let's say that uh, these vertices, these 
intermediate vertices uh, contains some toys uh, x, y, and z. So first, we would like to move a dog toy to the last vertex, and we will do it by perform exchanges uh, in subsequent pairs of vertices uh, from left to right. So first, we exchange d and x, resulting in this picture. Then we will exchange d and y, then d and z, and finally d and c. So now our picture is as follows, x, y, z, and c and d. And uh, now it is easy to see that we can move uh, a toy c from right to left uh, by performing exchanges from right to left. So now we exchange c and z, then y and c, and finally we exchange x and c. So finally, our picture is as follows. x, y, z stay uh, in the same vertices uh, as at the beginning, and c and d are uh, exchanged. So we can see that we can uh, exchange uh, toys between any pair of uh, uh, vertices, provided that they are in the same uh, connected component. That concludes the proof uh, that this condition is uh, sufficient to perform exchanges in one connected component. So finally, we can present a full algorithm. First, we need to split uh, our graph into uh, connected components, and then for every connected component, we need to uh, calculate whether uh, the condition is satisfied. There are many uh, standard graph algorithms which allows us uh, to partition a graph into connected components. For instance, we can use uh, DFS uh, or uh, BFS uh, algorithms uh, for uh, searching uh, through the graph, and both of them uh, works in times n plus m, where n is the number of vertices and m is the number of edges. Uh, or we can use uh, find and union structure, uh, which also runs in almost linear time. It's also worth mentioning a technical trick which allows us to calculate the condition uh, easily. Uh, namely, for each vertex v, we will calculate the value pv minus tv. Observe that for each satisfied vertices, uh, values pv and tv are equal, so this number will be zero. On the other hand, for vertices uh, who owns a dog toy and wants a cat toy, this value will be equal to one, and for vertices who owns a cat toy and wants a dog toy, this value will be equal to minus one. So the condition could be read as follows. The number of values one uh, in the connected component must be equal to a number of values uh, minus one. So, if we sum all of these values across all vertices in a connected component, uh, then the condition is satisfied if and only if this sum is equal to zero. Okay, so we are finally ready for the implementation. Uh, first, we will define variable n, which uh, is the number of vertices in our graph. And to find the connected components, we will use uh, a search uh, through our graph, which will be a variant of BFS, but uh, with a, a simpler queue. And first, we need to find adjacency lists uh, for uh, our vertices. Uh, so for every vertex v, we need to find a list of uh, all the vertices which are connected to v. So we will store it as a list of lists. And we will go for uh, through every edge and for edge uh, connecting vertices a b we will put vertex b on the 
adjacency list of vertex A and vice versa. We will also need a visited array in which for every vertex uh, we will be marking whether this vertex was, was visited by the search already or not. And now we iterate uh, through all of vertices and if uh, the vertex was not visited before uh, we know that this vertex will start a new connected component. So we will mark this uh, vertex as visited and we will put this vertex uh, into a list of vertices which are in the same connected component and which were not yet uh, examined for uh, outgoing edges. We also have a variable uh, which will contain uh, the sum of uh, values of all uh, vertices in the connected component. And finally, we will have a loop which will examine uh, vertices put into uh, the list queue. So while this uh, uh, list is not empty, we take any vertex from the list, for instance, the last one, and we remove it. Uh, from the list, uh, we update uh, the value uh, s uh, with the value of the uh, this vertex. So we know this is p v minus t v. Uh, and uh, next, uh, we will iterate through every edge uh, coming out from this vertex. So we'll iterate through the adjacency adjacency list uh, of uh, vertex V. And if uh, vertex uh, A was uh, not visited before, we know that this is a new vertex in this uh, connected component. So we say that this is visited and we put and we put it into a list. All right, so after we process all the vertices in the connect component, we need to examine the value s. And if this value is not equal to zero, uh, we know that we cannot make exchanges in this connected component, so we return false. And finally, if we examine all the connected components in the graph, uh, we will return true since we uh, haven't found any uh, bad connected component. Okay, our code works on the uh, test cases and it will uh, receive a full score uh, when evaluated by Kotelit.